So the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness and he remained there for 40 days and he was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts and the angels looked after him. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. And this is the gospel of the Lord. John, uh, a man I know, tried for years to give up his heavy drinking and he found it almost impossible. He thought he'd never be able to do it, but eventually he did and he hasn't taken a drink for about 15 years now. Talking to him a couple of years ago, he said something that has stayed with me and I find very interesting. He said this, he said, nobody knows how powerful evil is like someone who tries to oppose it. I'll give you that again. He said, nobody knows how powerful evil is like someone who tries to oppose it as he did. If you go along with evil, it won't bother you, but if you try to oppose it, it really, it'll come at you very, very forcibly. Jesus knew that because that was Jesus' own experience, how powerful evil is. I'd just like to mention two things in the Gospels about Jesus. First of all, Jesus set out to do an awful lot of good. He, he said himself, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full, and he spent so much of his life trying to bring that fullness of life to people. You know that yourself. The gospel is full of stories of he healing people, healing the sick, encouraging people, feeding people, uh, forgiving people, being with people, showing compassion to people. So he was full of goodness. And he kept telling people that he wanted to bring about a kingdom where there would be truth and where there would be love and where there would be compassion. And that was the aim of his life. He was absolutely committed to doing the good. That's the first thing you'll find in the Gospels. Now, the other thing that's clear in the Gospels as well is that he was opposed. He experienced evil. And today we hear just one instance of where he was tempted. He was tempted, if you like, to leave all his own desires for goodness behind and focus on himself, just focus on his own needs, that he would become a, a leader who would be popular with people. Um, so he was tempted to be selfish, to isolate it, uh, to forget about the pain and the suffering and turn away from what was best in himself. That's the first thing. It's very clear in the God. Those two things are very clear in the gospel. I have come that you may have life, and he tried to do that. And then secondly, the, the power uh, of evil and of temptation. And we heard, the, just in this gospel today, we heard about one of his temptations, that was in the desert, but he was tempted all his life to pull back. And ultimately, he had a final temptation uh, in the agony in the garden, uh, just uh, to walk away from pain and suffering. Now, Lent is a time when we, are, as Christians, are asked to share in that same experience of Jesus. And when, when we think of it, uh, we'll find that those two things go on in ourselves. We want to be good. We are good. God wants us uh, to bring out the goodness in us. We're capable of great 
unselfishness, what God wants for us. And that's why today we're asked to turn to the good news. He wants you and me to know the infinite love he has for me as an individual. And he wants, to, he wants me to pass on that love. He wants me to know he's compassionate towards me, but he also wants me and tells me I'm capable of passing on that compassion. It's the same with forgiveness. The good news is that God forgives me, but not just that, but that I am capable of forgiving others. He's generous with his gifts, but he's saying to me, you can be generous with yours as well. God is full of goodness that he wants me to experience and he wants me to pass on. That's the good news. Now, the other side of it is like Jesus. If you and I decide that we want to live that way, you can expect opposition from evil. It'll try in every way to oppose you. Let's take a few examples. You might be saying to yourself, you want to have the, the best relationship possible with God, and that's what God wants you to do. But you'll find yourself maybe subtly sinking and being okay with what I would call a part-time God. You know, just God for, for particular occasions like a Sunday or a wedding or a funeral. But you don't want God, or you'll oppose the God nearly, who wants to a say in how you speak, what your values are, um, how you think, the decisions you make about money and about family uh, and about life. You kind of can push God very subtly to the side. Or again, you know and you want to be a forgiving person, and yet if somebody hurts you, maybe a long time ago or a short while ago, and you find yourself, you know, the temptation is there to hold on to resentment or to bitterness or to hardness of heart, and it's a struggle. Evil keeps telling you it's all right to be angry. Or again, you would like to be able to share your money uh, with other people, but there's this... There's, again, there's that call or that, uh, that urge uh, to look after yourself and uh, to, to kind of be a materialistic person. One of the great temptations, and a lot of people suffer them, good people, is that you get into some kind of an addiction. It's either an addiction to, uh, to money, uh, to alcohol, so many people to sex, uh, to food, whatever it is. And all addictions have one thing in common. They're an effort to escape from taking responsibility and face the pain that's inevitable in life. And other kinds of way that we can uh, be influenced and pulled towards evil is to give in to despair, uh, to lose hope and to stay in it, or to become people who never say thanks to God. They're just some examples. You'll know uh, the area of your own life where you feel that pull yourself uh, for you and where it's strong for you as an individual. So the first Sunday of Lent is putting that conflict before us between the good that we're, we feel called to and God calls us to and the reality of evil which is pulling at us as well. Now, what do we do? Well, we try to do what Jesus did. First of all, he confronted the evil that was opposing him. He called it for what it was. Secondly, he went back and he prayed in his weakness, or feeling the power of his weakness, he prayed to his Father to have that sense of relationship with him. And the third thing he did was he used his temptations as an opportunity to redefine again his purpose, to deepen uh, his values and to live up to them. 
he made good decisions. And Lent is about that. It's about making good decisions. Amen.